So I found an old hard drive. I was casually looking through all the stuff in that drive and I stumbled upon an old artwork that I created years back when I was fairly new at digital painting. And as you can see, it's really badly done. So if I made this artwork today, what would it look like? What would I change? What would I do differently? You're about to find out in today's video. Let's do this. So let's talk about what I did in this speed paint when I created this six years ago. It's a fairly simple composition, there's a hooded man in the middle, there are trees around him and apparently a lot of smoke, fog, light coming from behind, I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure why I made it so white in some areas. So if I am to do a repaint today, I'll avoid using whites and pure blacks. I'd use a variation of lighter tones but not complete whites. But that's not a rule, I mean it all comes down to the art style and what you're trying to achieve with the final result. Also, I don't know why there is so much yellow in there. What was I trying to create? Poisonous fumes maybe? I don't know. And the ground? It doesn't feel like a plane. It looks like a bunch of old grass stacked together. And the figure? The hooded figure doesn't look like he's standing anywhere, looks like he's floating. The shadows on the ground, they don't fit with the perspective. And the highlights on the tree trunks, ugh, so ugly. Just lines, no texture, no shades. The figure has highlights on places that don't make sense, cause the light coming from behind is so strong that it should look almost like a complete silhouette. So let's recreate this. Okay, so I usually don't like to start on a complete white background color, so I'm gonna be dropping a grey color onto the canvas before I do anything else. Then I'm painting with a lighter color to separate the ground from the sky and define a horizon line and then working on the sky with some brush strokes and also on the ground to create a rough sense of perspective. After that, I am starting to sketch the trees. The trees that are far away in the distance have lighter value and the ones that are closer to you, the viewer, have darker value. Then I select a big soft brush and just paint over the edges of the canvas just to darken them, give it a little mood and keep the viewer's eye to the center of the composition. If you want to know more about why it's done, please watch my other video where I talk about composition in John Wick films. I'm dressed as John Wick and it's crazy but full of valuable information that might help you a lot with your paintings. So the forest setting is looking quite nice, it's dark and moody, some very basic highlights and shadows on the ground. Overall looking good so far. So now I'm gonna add a bit more texture to the ground using some texture brushes that I have. And by the way, if you want these brushes, I'll put up a link in the description so you can download them for free. Experiment with them, make some cool art and then show it to me. Send it over for some critique and stuff. You can do that through my Discord channel. Again, I'll put a link for you guys down in the description. A lot of you guys have asked about what brushes I normally use when painting. So I use a combination of different brushes but Here's the one I am using to paint this particular speed paint. I really like this brush, it blends well and has slight grain or texture to it. If you have downloaded my brush pack, you will be able to locate it quite easily. Alright, so I also added some highlights on the ground, experimented with a little texture here and there and made the edges even darker. I'm also painting some loose detail on the tree trunks and some grass on the ground. Now I'm just making a selection and painting some lighter tone on the ground to create these puddles. Next, I'm painting some highlights on the trees. You could also use texture brushes to do that, but here I'm just using a regular paintbrush to draw some vertical lines over the tree trunk, as you can see. Now it's time to create some fog between the trees, so I'm making selection of the few trees here and there, reverse the selection and paint the fog with a very light grey, just painting very lightly on my tablet. After that, some grass and plants here and there on the ground near the trees, just using several leaf brushes to do it. 
So now when most of the background is done, let's move on to the figure in the middle. Scary eyes, mysterious looks, hooded, cloaked, holding a staff or a spear, I don't know. So I have selected a darker color and painted a silhouette first. I am doing it on a new layer so that I can paint and erase to refine the silhouette's shape. And of course, a spear to accompany our mysterious traveler, wizard of old, soul leader, grim reaper, whatever the hell he is. And then his bright eyes looking right through you. Alright, now I'm going to add just a little bit of color here. So I'm just grouping everything that I've painted so far and made a copy of that group. Then I converted that group into a single layer. After that, I'm going to image adjustments and gradient map. Now I'm going to click on this bar right here and then choose a darker color for the left side of the gradient. And a lighter color for the right side of the gradient. See how it quickly added a bit of color on the painting? We're gonna use that as a base now and paint on top of it. To make the shadows even bluer, I am selecting a blue color, setting its blending mode to color and then painting over the shadows and then turning the opacity lower to a point where it looks alright. And now, let's create some highlights in the background. So I've selected a lighter color tone to paint some light areas between the trees and also on the grass and on the tree trunks. Now I am also painting the highlights on the trees that are closer in the foreground but this time I'm not doing it with the same warm color but I've selected a comparatively cooler color for this. I also added the same blues on the ground and on the grass. See how it's creating a difference in color temperatures? Now you are seeing the colors relative to each other. Looking good so far. Now I'm pretty happy with it and I could stop it right here and be fine with it. But since we are trying to take reference from the old artwork, it has pretty strong light coming from the background. So let's try that. So in the previous one, the strong light coming from behind is extremely white and it doesn't quite fit with the environment very well. For this one, I'll create a relatively warmer light coming from behind the silhouette. So I selected a brownish color, set the blending mode to color dodge, reduced the brush opacity down to around 17% and painted the background with a huge soft brush. Using the same big brush, I also painted with a very light yellow color with the blending mode set to normal and the opacity again 17%. I don't know why 17, I mean it doesn't have to be 17, feel free to use 15 or 20, you're gonna be fine. Okay now, since there is a bright light source in the background, the trees and the environment will also catch some of that strong light, so I'm painting some highlights here and there. Maybe now some of the foreground trees will also catch some of that strong background light. So guys, that's pretty much it. A little tweaking here and there and we can call it finished. Now, I do like this new artwork a lot better. It looks consistent, has better sense of perspective and pretty decent details on the ground too. There's also a variation of color temperature and a better sense of depth. Now, I like both of these versions. What do you think? One or two? 
please let me know in the comments. I'm also giving away the Photoshop file for this artwork so you can open it into your own program, see what I did in each layer of the artwork and maybe study from it. Hope that helps. So check out the link to that Photoshop file down in the description. Alright guys, that's it for today. If you like this video, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up, share this video with someone who might be interested and if you're new to this channel and you love art and illustration, hit that subscribe button to see more content coming up soon. Hope to see you again with another video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.